international student and I recently took my digital SAT on 6th of May and I received my scores on 19th of May. This was my very first and most probably my last attempt too because I have the desirable scores to get into the number one university of my country. So if I were to tell you about my scores, I scored a 1510 and if I were to break it down, I scored a 740 on the reading and writing portion and a 770 on the mathematics portion. So the reason why I am making this video today is that while I was preparing for my own test, I thought that there was lack of information and knowledge and lack of resources for the preparation of digital SAT. Because the batch 2023 of international students is somewhat like an experimental group. There is very little information about the digital SAT available across the web and we are the first ones to take the digital SAT. So I thought that if I would do well on the test, I will definitely make a video to guide the future test takers. This will include a comprehensive explanation of what the actual digital SAT like. Is it similar or is it very different to the paper based SAT? And it will include information about the paper pattern, about the type of the questions that are asked on the digital SAT, about the resources that I use and a few tips and tricks. And at the end of the video, I will address the most frequently asked and probably the most controversial question these days that what is the digital SAT actually like? Is it similar to the practice test provided by College Board on the Blue Book exam, on the Blue Book app, sorry, or is it different? So without any further delay, let's delve straight into the video. I hope that you will find it interesting and useful. Talking about the paper pattern, First, there will be two modules for your English portion, that is the reading and writing portion. Then there will be a 10 minutes break and then you will get two modules for your mathematics portion. Each English module will consist of 27 questions and it will take you 32 minutes for each module. So it makes a total of 54 questions and 64 minutes for your reading and writing portion. Then after a 10 minutes break, you will get two modules for mathematics. Each module will consist of 22 questions, which makes 44 questions in total for your mathematics portion. And each module will have a set time of 35 minutes, that is 70 minutes in total for the mathematics part. So it will take you two hours and 14 minutes at most. And the total number of questions asked will be 98 questions. If I first talk about the reading and writing portion of the digital SAT, yes, it is very different as compared to the paper-based SAT. Because in the paper-based SAT, there were lengthier passages and there were different kinds of questions asked. But on the digital SAT, there is this rule that they follow that is one question per passage. So this is something which is good for those who are not avid readers or those who have a very little attention span. This is a good news for them. First, you will get four to five questions about words and context. Then there will be a series of lengthier and somewhat complex questions. It will include questions like command of evidence, cross text connections, and questions including bar graphs and pie charts, and questions about poetry and about the central idea of the passage and things like that and at the end of each module you will get again a series of shorter questions they will be about standard conventions of english and it will include general questions about grammar and about the transition questions and punctuation questions and things like that so this is the paper pattern that they follow in the practice test as well as in the actual test too so if i were to tell you about the resources that are used for my preparation I use Khan Academy, mostly I use Khan Academy and it is the best resource that you could use to prepare for your DSAT because Khan Academy is first of all free, it is reliable and it has a huge question bank. So I would suggest you that you use Khan Academy and the second resource that I used were the practice tests provided by College Board on the Blue Book app and these are the only resources that I used to prepare for my reading and writing portion and I am being very honest with you. These are the only resources that I used and they helped me score a 700 plus on the reading and writing portion and you know that a score of 700 or above is considered pretty decent for the reading and writing portion. So I used Khan Academy and I used the practice test only. The first step for the English portion is that 
try not to space out during your test because this is something that you would not want to do on your test day because your time is very precious for you and be very vigilant and be very attentive and pay attention to every single detail especially on the reading and writing portion the college board is very smart they will use the transition words in such a manner that it becomes difficult to identify it and if there is a transition word somewhere in the passage and you somehow miss it you can get to the wrong answer and you would definitely not want that so be very vigilant and pay attention to each and every word the second thing is don't try to overthink anything don't try to infer your answers this is something that you are not required to do because most of the time you will see that the answer will be actually hidden within the passage or within the text provided like for example in the words and context questions what they do is that uh, they use a synonym or they actually use a definition of the word somewhere in the passage. So if you are able to identify that word or identify the definition, then there are high chances that you will get to the correct answer. So yes, don't overthink anything during your test. Another important point for your English portion is that attempt the questions in the way you are comfortable, right? This is something which helped me improve my scores by 40 to 45 points. Uh, the pattern that I followed on the test day as well was that first I used to attempt the four to five questions about words and context. Then I would go to the review page at the bottom and I would straight jump to the last question that is the 27th question on the module. And then I would move backwards. So this is something which helped me score more on the reading and writing portion. So you should also try to experiment with your practice test and see that which pattern suits you the most. Another important point I would like to add here is that you should try to look out for your weaknesses and try to fix them. For example, let's say that you are making mistakes in the transition words question. So what you should do is that you should go straight to the YouTube or to any other website and watch videos on that very specific topic and try to build your concepts and try to learn your strategies to solve those specific questions. Before moving on to the mathematics portion, I would like to tell you an interesting thing about myself that I was someone who was out of practice for mathematics for at least two years because mathematics was not my subject during college. So I had to take a start from scratch and it took me like 40 to 45 days to fully prepare for the test and I scored a 770 on the mathematics portion. So if you want then with a little bit of efforts you can also score a 750 above on the mathematics portion you just have to believe in yourself and you have to try really hard and practice really hard for that the mathematics portion of the digital sat remains almost the same uh, because uh, the contents remain same and the type of the questions that are asked remain the same and the syllabus remains the same right uh, there will be two modules you will be asked 22 questions in each module and each module will take you 35 minutes so you need to be quick with your answers and the syllabus remains the same like the same questions about algebra and about uh, geometry and trigonometry and problem solving and data analysis and things like that like the syllabus remains almost the same so the resources that I used to prepare for the mathematics portion was again Khan Academy. It is the best resource that you can use to prepare for your mathematics portion because it takes you step by step, right? It helps you uh, build your foundations, then it takes you to a medium level and then at the end it takes you to an advanced level. So this is the best resource that anyone could use to prepare for the digital SAT mathematics portion. Another resource, again, I use the practice test provided by College Board on the Blue Book app. And then I solved a lot of QS reports, right? I solved the QS reports from 2023, 2022, 2021, 2020, 2019, 18, and 17. So I practiced a lot. I practiced a lot of questions. I practiced tons of questions. And this is something which helped me score a 770 on the mathematics portion. So. Uh, if I were to give you a few tips about the mathematics portion, well, there is nothing except for 
practice, practice and practice, right? I would suggest that you practice tons of questions and also another tip that you should learn how to use the Desmos graphing calculator. This will help you very much on your test day. So uh, do learn how to use the Desmos graphing calculator if you already don't. Another very important tip is that don't become obsessed with a single question, especially for the mathematics portion. After you read a question within a minute, you know yourself that if I will be able to answer this question or not. So don't waste your time on a single question because time is very precious for you. A few general tips for your test day is that number one, you should practice in test-like conditions, right? While you are solving a practice test or you are solving a QS report from the past, what you should do is that you should sit in a separate room where there are absolutely no distractions, there is no mobile phone, no television. So try to practice in test-like conditions. And number two is that at least 10 days before your test, you should start taking things easy, right? Uh, don't overthink and don't panic and like take eight hours sleep minimum each night and try getting up earlier in the morning at around 6 or 7 a.m. because the test actually starts at around 8 a.m. So train your mind for the actual test day. Now is the time to answer the most frequently asked question and probably the most controversial question at the moment is that what is the actual digital SAT like? Right? There are many rumors and there are many misconceptions about it. Like there will be students, they will be telling you that the actual test is very difficult and it is very different from the practice test in the Blue Book app and the questions are very different and it, it's, it's, it's crazy dif difficult. Right? There are many rumors like that. But these are false accusations, I would say, because I am telling you this by my own experience that the actual digital SAT is more or less like the practice test provided in the Blue Book app, right? The difficulty level almost remains the same. The similar type of questions will be asked. There will be very easy questions. There will be moderate questions. There will be difficult questions and there will be like crazy dif difficult questions as well. And it is mostly the same and if you are someone who is scoring well on your practice test I guarantee you that most probably there are high chances that you will get a similar score or within the same range on your actual test too and although yes here I must admit that there were a few questions on the mathematics portion that were a bit unique and they were different and they were new because I saw tons of QS reports and I saw tons of past papers and tons of practice tests and there were there such questions on the actual DSAT that were not present in the practice test or not present in the QS reports. They were unique but they were easier, right? If you are someone who is good at the application of the formulas and you know the actual concepts behind the questions and the formulas, so I think that it will be easier for you to solve those questions. First, the, the, those questions, those unique questions were not in a huge number. They were like very little in number, around eight to 10 maybe, or maybe even less. And they were not very complex or not very difficult. Uh, well, I hope that I have covered almost everything about the digital SAT, reading and writing portion and the mathematics portion. But if something's missing and you have any kind of query, you can ask me in the comment section below. I will add the links to the QS reports and to the resources that I used for my preparation. And also, I will also add the links for the YouTube channels that helped me prepare for my digital SAT. So with that, I think it's time to say our goodbyes and there is nothing left. So bye-bye.